Hey there everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another video. This is the latest in my ongoing series of videos giving advice on creating comics uh, and just basically storytelling of all kinds. Uh, now just so you're not uh, staring at nothing as I talk to you and give you this advice, I'm going to be going through um, artwork, original artwork that I used uh, to create my Brody's Ghost series. But uh, today's topic is going to be coming up with story ideas. Uh, clearly one of the most important uh, aspects um, of uh, creating comics or telling stories. you got to come up with good ideas, but how? <laughs> how do people come up with good story ideas? Well, I'm hoping to shed a little light on that. Let's go ahead and get into the first uh, piece of advice. Number one, base your story on a real-life occurrence, something that has happened to you or someone you know. All right, so this is a, a double-page spread from uh, Brody's Ghost, book two. thought you'd enjoy looking at some of the finer details of this one as I uh, get into this first bit of advice about, you know, using your own life. They always say, write what you know. Um, maybe things have occurred to you in your own life that are actually just begging to be t turned into stories, uh, or to someone that you know. You know, very often uh, people are taking, uh, you know, the opportunity to write something autobiographical um, and of course you're going to care very deeply about a story if it is based uh, loosely or even uh, very closely on something that uh, actually occurred to you so that's certainly one very viable way of uh, getting a story going number two do a mashup of two or more different story genres uh, this is the scene where Brody meets uh, these demi ghosts for the first time I always uh, I was always pretty happy with this <laughs> this moment of truth when he encounters these bizarre looking creatures and then of course you get his reaction down here. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, you know, this uh, second piece of advice about combining different types of stories, mashing them up, that that's very close to my style. You know, I did a, uh, my first uh, series was called uh, Akiko on the Planet Smoo and you could say that it was kind of a mashup of uh, The Wizard of Oz uh, and Star Wars. So I took sort of children's book uh, storytelling and mixed it together with sci-fi. Uh, you would, um, you know, probably mix two or three uh, uh, entirely different things, but, um, you know, just deciding to have a, a Western story that involves vampires or whatever, you know, uh, suddenly you something might just spark your interest if, if you mix together two uh, seemingly quite different things. So um, that has served me well, and uh, who knows, maybe uh, maybe Maybe even just getting that advice has got you already thinking uh, of a couple of different types of stories that you could combine. Number three, build your story on a what-if scenario. All right, so this is again from Brody's Ghost, uh, book two, and sort of interesting that uh, at a certain time I was actually writing dialogue in the margins, maybe to help make sure that I drew the facial expressions properly <laughs> to go along with it. Anyway, um, yes, uh, uh, basing a story on a what-if scenario, that is definitely uh, something that I have been doing for years. And, um, yeah, if you're the kind of person that ideas like that sort of pop into your brain, sort of like, uh, you know, boy, what, what if I could suddenly read people's minds? You know, what if this? What if that? You know, if these questions are occurring to you, uh, every single one of those things can be turned uh, into stories. And, um, you know, before you know it, if you start looking at things like you're watching The Incredibles, uh, I think you can uh, sort of think that that whole thing comes down to what if superheroes uh, had to secretly live uh, ordinary, boring lives, you know? <laughs> What would that be like for them? How would they feel about it? You know, um, uh, almost any story that you think of can be reduced to uh, a single "what if" type of scenario. So, um, yeah, for sure, uh, if you find that things like that pop into your mind uh, on a regular basis, write them down and start turning them into stories. Number four: If you have a character but not a story, try to tell a day in the life of that character. So this is from Brody's Ghost Book 3, one of these uh, desolated futuristic landscapes that I love to do. And uh, here we have Talia, uh, a character that certainly plays a big role in the story. And, you know, a lot of people, I think, creating characters comes more naturally to them than telling stories. Uh, and if you are such a person, well, you know, build off of your strength. Take this character that you've created and then just begin telling a day in the life 
of that person and keep going you know and as you do uh, perhaps something will occur to you that allows you to turn that ordinary day into the day that something unusual happened because you know normally people don't write a story about the day that nothing happened uh, and uh, the more you write, uh, the more this uh, imaginary day in the life progresses, I think the more likely it is that something is going to uh, occur to you that will make this day unlike any other. Number five, think of a single scene, then reverse engineer a story to get you to that scene. This one again from Brody's Ghost, book three. I thought you'd enjoy getting a closer look at the sort of cityscape scene here. Um, but uh, absolutely, you can start with a single scene. If, the, if you have a type of scene that you want to write, like a fight scene or an action sequence, uh, go ahead and start with that and then, as I said, reverse engineer, build back and, and try to create a story that allows that scene. Uh, to take place. You know, you don't necessarily have to start at the beginning of the story. Uh, any part of the story can serve as an entry point, uh, and it'll pull you into it, and you start getting excited about it, and then you can just go back and, and, and write those earlier scenes that build up towards the one that got you started. Number six, keep an eye out for interesting news stories. There's a reason why so many movies are based on a true story. Yeah, I mean, if you're stuck for uh, coming up with story ideas and you're not the kind of person who ever goes to, you know, uh, read through a news site, you might want to change your habits there because especially some of these quirky little news stories are just uh, really, uh, you know, movies in the making almost, or in your case, a, a comic book story in the making. Um, fascinating uh, stories are, are to be found in these little news stories um, for people who are, you know, creative enough to keep their eyes open and, and see the potential in them. And, you know, as they say, <laughs> truth is stranger than fiction. You often will read stories of things that are just like, really? That really happened? You know, and um, that alone can uh, get you fired up to, to write a story that is, you know, either the telling of that particular story or something that's just loosely based on it. Number seven, begin by copying a favorite book or movie, then change it until it becomes a very different story. Uh, now we've moved to uh, artwork from Brody's Ghost, book four. And uh, yeah, I guess this piece of advice we could call the fan fiction uh, approach. Um, you know, instead of just starting with a blank sheet of paper and nothing to work with, go ahead, write a piece of fan fiction. Uh, write something that's really based very directly on someone else's work, and then uh, challenge yourself to begin um, altering it, changing certain parts of it, changing more and more of it, until little by little uh, it becomes a completely different story. I'm a big fan of, of leaning on the masters and learning from them. Uh, you know, they really can teach you everything that you need to know about storytelling, and I think sometimes this idea that, oh, I need to be 100% original, you know, that can be kind of crippling for the uh, beginning uh, writer. Just go ahead, uh, begin by copying, and then uh, take your time and, and do your best to uh, change aspects of it uh, bit by bit, page by page, until it becomes something entirely original over time. Number eight, start with a location that interests you, then write about a person who lives in that location. So yeah, you might be the kind of person uh, where a certain location uh, really is the thing that grabs your interest, or even a time period, you know, say you're fascinated by um, uh, the Dark Ages, a medieval setting. Uh, go ahead and start writing about that place uh, and uh, create a character, even if it's just a bland one, an average everyday person who lives in that location. Um, uh, whatever it takes to pull yourself into a story, you don't necessarily need to have an amazing idea at the outset, as long as you've got something uh, that's grabbing your attention, that's uh, pulling you into it. And yeah, for you it might be the location, the time period, uh, stuff like that. Uh, anything that gets you into it, into it is uh, fair game as far as I'm concerned uh, for uh, starting a story. Number nine, don't just watch TV, study TV or books, movies, etc. 
Yeah, I think one of the things that sets the creative person apart uh, is the, their ability to always be sort of studying and learning from uh, the entertainment uh, sources that they explore. So that uh, truly when you're watching uh, an episode of Breaking Bad or whatever, sure, you can just sit there and be entertained, or you can be breaking it down and figuring out, you know, what makes this tick? What is it that makes this story so interesting? What can I learn from it? Uh, what, you know, little ideas here and there can I borrow from it? Uh, I think, uh, really, there's no reason why you can't be entertained and be learning something uh, at the same time. Every time you sit down to watch TV or go to see a movie uh, or read a book, all of these are just uh, great um, learning opportunities. And most of the time, you'll come away from them with uh, at least some germ of an idea uh, for a story that you could tell yourself. And finally, number 10, just start writing. Often a great story can emerge even when you're totally making it up as you go along. You know, my first uh, comic book story, Akiko on the Planet Smoo, uh, was indeed just made up on the fly. I did not know what the end of the story was going to be. I didn't even know what the middle of the story was going to be. I was really just making it up uh, as I went along. Almost like sitting around a campfire, just telling a story, making it up. You know, uh, there's nothing wrong with that approach, uh, especially if you're the kind of person who gets a little too uptight about, you know, preparations and, oh, this needs to be perfect. Well, it doesn't need to be perfect. Just get in there and start writing. You know, the, the real enemy of, uh, of a writer is procrastination, I think, and, and failing to actually sit down and start writing the story. It's not going to be perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, it just needs to be words on paper. Then you've got something to work with, uh, something that you can begin to improve and fix uh, and little by little turn into, uh, who knows, something that really could turn out to be a great story. All right, well, there's my video on coming up with story ideas. I really do hope it uh, helps you out. And let me know if you have any uh, ideas for other types of videos like this that I can do. I'm always eager to share all my best advice. And, of course, I like to thank people who've helped me by getting any of my books, like Mickey Falls or Brody's Ghost. Mastering Mongo or the Realism Challenge. Uh, super, super appreciative of those of you uh, who support me uh, by getting those books. But let's go ahead and wind this one down. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.